Okay, I should be live. Uh, I hope I am. If someone can ask a question, you never know with this uh, technology here. Um, today, I want to talk about content. I want to share what we're, what I'm doing, and uh, hear back from you about what you're doing as we proceed on our 90-day challenge. Uh, don't be shy about asking questions in languages other than English. And if you want me to say something in a language other than English, if I can speak that language, I'm happy to do so. And of course, so I try to do something every day. All right, this is the 90 day challenge. But, but at the same time, I, I, I sort of caught myself saying, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to, to achieve more than what I can achieve. Um, because, you know, language learning is a slow, gradual process. You can't force it. Uh, it's more a matter of just putting in some time regularly without putting too much pressure on yourself and gradually you will see the results and they won't be immediate. Um, now, a big issue to me in language learning is content. Uh, content is the teacher. And uh, so I'm struggling right now. Today I'm gonna to talk about Arabic. I was gonna show you the iPad, but again, you know, I had this time slot, depending on what else I have uh, going on. I wasn't able to test out the iPad. I don't want to have any more technical glitches. So I'm going to stay with uh, sharing with you my screen in Arabic. Um, but uh, in fact, maybe I'll just show you the screen now. So screen share, screen here, start screen share. All right. So you should be able to see my screen. So um, there we are. So, you know, at link now we have uh, if I look at the lesson feed, I can see what other people have been studying. Uh, I may or may not be interested in this. Uh, you know, I can go to the news feed here and I can find news articles. In the case of Arabic, we only scrape from Al Jazeera. Scraping means that Link has the ability to go to a website, news website, and import automatically that content into Link just for the individual use of that user. So we're not sharing it in the library. So it's not in violation of any copyright. But I know if I look at these Al Jazeera articles, I know from experience that it's simply too much for me. So if I, if I, uh, you know, I, what I'm talking about here is, is developing a, a content strategy that works for me. If I'm in a language like French, Italian, Spanish, English, there's just lots of content. And you can find content that's not too difficult and still interesting. It's written in the in an alphabet that you're familiar with. It's not difficult to do. However, in Arabic, of course, it's a I'm still getting used to reading the Arabic alphabet. And of course, there are no freebie words. Every word is a, a, a brand new word to learn. You can't, you know, it's not like uh, the word uh, content is going to work in Spanish and French and Portuguese and Italian. That's not the case in Italian, in, in excuse me, in, in Arabic. So if I open one of these, so this is now being imported into Link. And as soon as the uh, article is in, I will close the pop up here. So we see actually there are quite a lot of words here that I have already saved. So I am making some progress, but realistically, Al -Irani. Yeah, that one is fine. But uh, uh, Hassan uh, Rahani, okay, that's the guy's name. So if, if it's a guy's name, Hassan Rahani, then I would, of course, say no. Okay, wait here. Hassan. No. Azima. And uh, Ruhani. Hassan, Hassan Ruhani. I remove that because it's a name. So I don't want names cluttering up my statistics. But still, I find it difficult to read. It's I can do it. I can make my way through. Of course, this is just a newspaper article. There is no no um, audio for this. If I go to if I open another tab, I have two uh, tabs going, and I go to my lessons. Uh, where 
I have. So as you can see, actually, if you look at the lessons that I've been doing, so I alternate. You see, I open this Al Jazeera, which I am going to read, and it'll be tough, 20% new words. Uh, most recently, I went back to my mini stories because, you know, they're comfortable. It's easy, and, and I'm still getting used to reading the alphabet. So I'm reading stuff that I'm familiar with, and it's helping me read. And then I did a few lessons in Asimil, lessons which I had transcribed for me. But I must say that the Arabic um, the stories in the Asimil are quite uninteresting to me. And then I had actually what was a very interesting interview here, and we can open it here, on uh, France 24, where I do have the audio, and it's an interview with a person. Now, this is going to take a while to open up because it has a lot of audio. Uh, interview on France 24 with a Palestinian who was going to run for mayor in Jerusalem. So it's quite interesting um, to hear the Palestinian perspective uh, on uh, what's happening in, uh, in uh, Israel and the different options that Palestinians have in terms of protecting their rights and furthering their cause. So the content is inherently interesting, but there's a lot of these so-called yellow words. Those are not words that I know necessarily. Those are words that I have looked up and that I'm still in the process of learning. I mean, I have 529 links there. That means that I have looked these words up, but by no means do I know them. And there's so many there that in effect, it becomes very, very tough. And when I listen to the audio, I really don't understand it. There are parts that I understand and parts that I don't understand. So I end up kind of back and forth between, uh, you know, Difficult content, easier content. The SML is kind of intermediate content. And uh, the compelling content is tough. One bit of news I discovered, because if we get back to, if we get back to, uh, you know, content, sources of content, Al Jazeera and France 24, now I paid to have this transcribed. Uh, France 24 has a lot of Arabic interviews and podcasts. So does Al Jazeera, but they come without transcripts. So I discovered that there's a site called Vocalmatic. Actually, I found two sites that provide automatic transcription. One of them gave me a transcription into Arabic, but it was all left to right. So that wasn't going to work. But these people gave it left, uh, 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 right to left which was fine, but then I had, as you can see, I had an exchange here with them a chat in chat because I loaded one file and that worked and then I couldn't load the second file and I kept on getting error messages. And, but eventually I will get this solved and, and the fact, and I think the cost of it was like for $30 a month, I was entitled to five hours of transcript. Five hours is a lot for me. I mean, because that's each of these interviews at France 24 is about, uh, you know, this interview here. Where was it? This is about a 12 minute interview. Uh, it keeps me busy for a long time. And, you know, I'm a good week on this or longer. So if I have five hours a month of transcribed podcasts, uh, that's more than I can handle. And uh, so, I mean, to me, that's a good investment versus, you know, however many lessons I could get for $30, uh, you know, on Skype. Uh, this is a lot of useful content. And I, I think the whole area of podcasts and now our ability at Link to, to bring in, um, you know, videos, you can basically, we have a, a, our import extension that enables you to, to basically import any video that has uh, subtitles and bring that in as learning content at link so that you can read the text and save words and then watch the video and then take the sound away with you and listen to it. Uh, again, this opens up the whole YouTube area. Unfortunately, I haven't found any Arabic movies with Arabic subtitles. So it doesn't help me in Arabic. I'm not sure if that's available in Farsi, but uh, this uh, transcription service, if I can resolve whatever technical problem we have here, uh, 
they um, they also provide transcription for Farsi or for Persian. I'm going to call it Persian from now on. So I just signal that to you because I think one of our, the, the, you know, if I look at what matters in language learning, uh, content is, is big. Uh, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to save these questions. Please ask your questions. I'm going to continue talking a bit about content and then I will start answering questions. I was talking to someone who was involved in some, uh, English language schools in Toronto and, uh, they offered, uh, they had both immigrants who paid very little and then foreign students who paid a lot to study at the school. Foreign students got access to, uh, sort of a, an online learning tool. Uh, but apparently the online learning tool just consisted of exercises and drills and fill the blanks and stuff like that. And I must say that all of those kinds of workbook drill exercises, things, I don't find that very useful. What I think is absolutely essential is content. If, if uh, teachers or if somehow we can be directed to content that really works for us because it's interesting and it's just a little bit difficult for us, it's at the right level, or maybe we have a strategy that we very difficult with easy and stuff like that. That's going to get us there faster. And that's why I think this kind of automatic transcription service is, is great. Uh, and so that, uh, yeah, but at any rate, there is a lot of content out there. Uh, Al Jazeera, I'm going to go through this article, uh, but content is king. And, uh, and, you know, and we do spend a lot of time, I find, that I spend a lot of time uh, getting the content. Like this is quite an exercise here to to find the uh, you know the the even here. Like if I go to the France 24 uh, site, I find it difficult to figure out where their podcasts are, and then I go to iTunes, and and it just takes. And then once I find the uh, the podcast, then how do I actually get that? Uh, URL or how do I get that file? Because the file is uh, the file is not necessarily an MP3 format. So then I got to go and find some way of converting it into MP3 format. I do have that. In fact, iTunes will convert convert it into MP3. So there's a lot that goes into. And then of course, if I have to have it transcribed and stuff like that. So I think I find that. And of course, you can also say that going to bookstores and seeing what's there is also part of that whole finding the content. The actual grammatical explanations, they're readily available. If I want to Google, you know, Persian verbs, Russian noun declensions, I mean, it's all there. Uh, there are great PDF grammars that you can download. So the, the information about the grammar is readily available. What's less easy to get your hands on a lot of the time is really good motivating, helpful content with both audio and text. We have a lot at link, but, but very soon, if, you know, if we're interested in a particular subject, it's not obvious that, uh, you know, that the, uh, that the feed here at link is going to be, uh, of stuff that, that, uh, that you're interested in. Although it does very often, it suggests things that might be of interest, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, sometimes you got to go and explore on your own. Now, a couple of questions here. So, uh, so I should fi fi finish off, by the way. I'm staying on Arabic, so just to let you know what I'm doing, and you guys can do whatever you're doing, but I'm going to, uh, when we finish this, I'm going to read through, probably read through that Al Jazeera article, and uh, then I have a discussion at 11 with Dahlia, and I've asked Dahlia, I sent her a copy of that article, uh, about the Palestinian who was planning to run for mayor of Jerusalem because Dahlia is originally from uh, Palestine and uh, although she lives in the States and maybe if we talk about that article and there's some aspects of the, the Arabic that one of the people in the interview uses that strikes me as a bit strange, might be Palestinian, she might know about that. So we're going to talk a bit about that interview. And I'm staying on Arabic. I was on Arabic yesterday, today, tomorrow, and then around noon on Wednesday, I'm going to switch back to Persian. And I've decided to stop calling it Farsi. I'm going to call the language Persian because I just find that, that uh, the word Farsi is how they say Persian in their language. But in English, we call it Persian. 
All right, a couple of questions. How to turn your passive vocabulary into active vocabulary? Um, first of all, there is a natural process whereby the more you listen and the more you have read and seen words in a variety of contexts, the more confident you become as to the meaning of these words, how they're used, which other words they're used together with, and words, and especially phrases, I like saving phrases and, and looking at phrases, then the, you start to want to use them because they become a part of you. They're bouncing around in your brain, especially if you do a lot of listening. Uh, and I think active vocabulary usually refers to speaking because when we are writing, we can look things up. We don't have to have the word there, you know, on the spot immediately handy. And in fact, if we, you know, if we can speak, we can, all, we can also write it down. So the, the issue is getting to where you can use these words in your speaking. Uh, so first thing is that, that lots of content, lots of listening is going to help you. Uh, the second thing, I find that I have never gotten to speaking as quickly as now, and, and I ascribe that to the mini stories, because there's so much repetition of vocabulary and repetitive listening to these stories, which in turn have a lot of repetition, uh, that has really helped me, uh, you know, get to uh, where I can speak. And the other thing you have to remember is that whoever you're speaking to, if they're a native speaker, they will always have a larger active vocabulary than you have. And you have, therefore, it's a good idea to have a large passive vocabulary so you can understand what people are saying and you will have a smaller active vocabulary that you can use to, uh, you know, defend yourself, so to speak. Um, Maybe I, uh, you are, let's, let's stop screen sharing so that I can look at you here. All right. Yeah. So there we are. So the question is, uh, just a second here. I'm going to do something. Take this over here. All right. So, uh, and one other thing with, with uh, converting stuff into active vocabulary. When you start speaking, you struggle. You struggle to remember things that you know that you know, so that the act of speaking itself helps you convert words into active vocabulary. Uh, that means you have to be willing to uh, deal with the uh, uncomfortable situation of not being able to say what you want to say, that you can't express all the thoughts that you have. You can't sound so intelligent because you can't find the words. And you just have to keep on doing it. So it comes a point when you have a sufficient base sort of a passive vocabulary you just have to start speaking and speaking a lot so basically converting uh passive into active point number one uh accumulate as large a, a sort of a base of passive vocabulary as you can lots of listening and reading b you, you know focus on phrases get used to the words three use or see i guess use the many stories listen to them many many times as a lead up to speaking and then when you feel you're ready to speak speak a lot and you will gradually get better and that's all and and basically congratulate yourself for whatever you're able to do and don't worry about what you weren't able to do uh okay do you ever find someone to help you write and transcribe books okay uh i mean books that's a lot uh, you know, it, it, it would be ideal if you could just, you know, have something that automatically transcribe audio into into script so that you can learn from it. And that's what I've been looking for. So that's where I uh, Googled automatic transcription for Arabic. That's what I Googled. And a number of sites came up. Uh, the first one I tried, it worked, but the Arabic went from uh, left to right, like English. So I couldn't use that. And uh, then I tried another site and it seemed to work, but now I have trouble uploading files. So hopefully we can resolve that issue. But I think increasingly there are going to be services where you can automatically transcribe audio, creating transcripts, which are ideal for language learning. Because obviously if you have a live conversation, which is then transcribed, that's more alive than say an article, which you have someone record for you. 
where it's written first and then uh, recorded. So yeah, I'm starting to do, in the past I have paid people to transcribe uh, audio. Uh, that's how I got some of the ASIMIL material into my account at Link. I did that for Romanian. I've, did that, I've done that for other languages, but now if there's automatic translation, or excuse me, automatic transcription services available, that's of course much more economical than paying people to transcribe by hand. Now, what would you say the minimum is for saying that you speak a language? Minimum sort of level? Mm -hmm. Ah, you know, I think you can say, uh, I, I guess, <clears throat> like I say that I speak, say 17 or 18 languages, realistically, uh, I, can, I can easily switch into maybe 10 or 12 of them so that I could speak right now if somebody came at me. Uh, you know, if you take a language like Korean here in Palm Springs, we're at a golf facility where there are a bunch of Korean golf semi-pro type people working out, practicing. And so I chat with them and I mean, they're very impressed with my Korean. I recognize how inadequate my Korean is. However, in a situation of necessity, I can speak. Uh, I have quite a large passive vocabulary. Can I say that I speak Korean? I might be, real, but I end up saying I do. So if, if, I guess the simple answer would be, if you are a B1 on the European uh, scale, if you're no longer in that sort of beginner stage, if you are in a B1 stage, I think you can say that you speak the language. You can't say that you're fluent in the language. I think B2 is fluent. It's not perfect, but it's fluent. So in the, if, for those of you who are familiar with, or maybe not familiar with the European scale, there's A, B, and C. A is beginner, B is intermediate, and C is advanced. So the C, those people are very proficient. Like I consider myself to be a C level in French. Close to C in uh, Japanese, but I would struggle with reading literature in Japanese, for example. Uh, but let's say with Chinese and Japanese, I'm at a high B2 level. I'm fluent. Um, but if you're B1, I think you can say, if you're a starting intermediate, you can say you speak the language. If you're a B2, and by the way, I think the distance from B1 to B2 is huge, huge, to going from where you can just say, I speak the language, to where you are fluent in the language. And bear in mind that, that some people are going to be maybe better at reading and not so good at speaking or uh, better at reading, not so good at listening. And so that there are ranges, the skills, we might be better in some languages and certain aspects of the language. But as a general statement, I would say that if you are an intermediate, a low intermediate, you can say you speak the language. If you are a high intermediate, you can say you're fluent in the language. That's my statement now. We'll see what other people have to say. What do you think about talking to yourself when you're learning the language as a way to improve? Um, you know, whatever works, uh, I think with, you know, when I think back now, when I was working on French, I did a lot more of those kinds of things, speaking to myself, uh, practicing, you know, pronouncing, listening to my pronunciation, a lot more sort of deliberate, trying to convert myself into a natural speaker of the language. But now after having learned so many languages, I don't do any of that. Uh, I find that just the listening and reading gets me there. Now, is that because I am a more experienced language learner? Is it because, in fact, I didn't really need to do those things? I don't know. But language learning is this sort of personal journey of exploration. So I think we should do all those things. Whatever we feel like doing, whatever we find enjoyable as we're exploring and toying with the language and pursuing different things in the language. Why not do all of these things? Do things that you find work for you. Uh, I think the main thing is to stay engaged with the language, doing things with the language, uh, spending the time, remaining motivated. So I have no objective study on uh, which would show that it's a good thing or not a good thing to speak uh, to yourself when you're learning a language. Okay. So that is insofar as the questions. If there are any other questions, uh, please let me know. 
Uh, I think that's good enough. We're going to cut it short a little bit today. If there are no more questions, uh, I'm going to go to my Arabic. Uh, it's a bit of a tough, uh, uh, you know, assignment I've given myself because I uh, it, having two languages on the go means a you have less time to spend on either one, and b sometimes you're confused. Your brain is a little confused uh, with two languages going at the same time. On the other hand, I do enjoy them both. And I enjoy going from the one to the other. Uh, I'm always reluctant to leave my Arabic to go to Persian and then reluctant to leave my Persian to go back to Arabic. And yet I look forward to going to the other one at the same time. So no more questions. We're going to stop it right here. And if I can get organized, then on Wednesday, I'll try and show you how I use the iPad. All right, then. Bye for now.